Uh, good day guys, this is Maliki and today I'm going to talk to you about sections and how we can start to generate construction sections for our documentation course. Now to do the sections we'll need to use a certain tool which you can see up here called Detail Element. Now it's very important for you to check that you've got this tool and if you haven't there could be a number of reasons for this. First one check up here and see if you've got the CAD image suite of tools loaded up. If this one is here and you can't see the detail element tool, well the other workaround is to try go to options, work environment, apply profile because if you have a profile chosen which is not this CAD image profile 19 for instance I will just revert to standard. You can see that underneath the uh, documentation I do not have the detail element tool available. Let's go up again options work environment apply profile CAD image profile 19 and again if I just repeat what I've done there you can see my detail element is now back. If you haven't got this CAD image suite look check the uh, Moodle page because myarchicad.com CAD image tools is available and in the uh, scoping and preliminary design the course introduction I give you a download link for it. So let's get on to sections. This uh, building already has got some sections but let's say we want to draw another one. So I go to the section you can double click it to open settings. The uh, CAD notes on Moodle go into these in a fair bit of detail to save time in the video I'm just going to move on just look at the reference A4 um, to draw it I'm just going to do a long section through the house I click once I start to gesture up the page and to keep the line straight I hold down the shift button click again to finish it and put your eye looking in any direction whichever one you choose I'm going to go to the right um, don't worry about these references because we haven't put the section on the layout yet okay um, let's put it onto the view map where is, is where we want to start doing the serious work um, over here in sections there's the new one I'm going to drag that over into sections as before I'm going to hit it and go sections settings and make sure that your layer combination set the sections and just make sure these are uh, chosen in line with what the notes have told us to do if I click that and I'm going to then just close my organizer up here go into A4 section AA and we've got a section you can see that I already have got some wall coverings so if you cannot see these go control A and check and make sure that you've got the right uh, layer uh, turned on for these things I think it's normally design wall coverings as you can see up here design wall coverings okay now we want to start doing some work to make it a construction section first thing I'm going to do is open my detail element tool I'm going to go to walls and I'm going to go to the timber one look at the framing first and you can see it asks you a few things about the width of the wall is there a window in it well looking over here we have a window um, I didn't check the height of the wall but that's not that important because we can stretch the detail element but later I think this little highlighted part is where the uh, top plates are so I'm just going to bring this thing back up to the normal to the perpendicular straight here I'm going to take out well I'll leave the window in because we actually have a window our window goes right to the ground so I'm going to make that zero let's look at the members inside we've got a top plate um, you may need a strengthening plate or ribbon plate depending on where it is um, my buttons will probably need one so I'll just leave it on to the right hand side for now um, you can check through these but the defaults are normally good linings you've got to decide is it an external wall is it an internal wall my wall is uh, external so I'm going to put the lining on the right hand side only uh, here the default is 10 to represent jib uh, but look sometimes we make it 15 because when you print out to 1 to 50 lines 10 millimeters apart 
seem to read as one big thick line, so it's a little bit of a trick that we try. Insulation, again, you've got to decide, do I need it? And there could be a few reasons for that. Something to discuss with your colleagues and your tutor. Anyway, let's just accept that and try and put it in. Click OK. I zoom in here and click see what happened. And you can see that I have got something in here. I shift click. And I'm just going to hit that and go to move the node. Stretch it up here. And I now have a wall which has got a lining, insulation, and framing and logs. Let's try an internal wall. So I'm going to hit detail element again. I'm going to uh, check the settings of the framing. This time the top plate I'm going to make it center. Um, the linings, this time, they're going to be two because it's an internal wall. Insulation, again that's up to you. What type of room is it? Heat loss, there's a couple of things to consider. Uh, if we go back to framing, um, the wall frame, this wall does not have a window so I'm going to click this checkbox to take it out. And here we go, go back in, zoom, click again. And you could have measured the height of the wall first guys, but I'm just going to stretch this up and do it as I did before, hold this down, move the node, take it up. And the drawing starts to look like a section. You can try these walls, but I'm going to move on to uh, mid floor. So to mid floor, I'm going to assume we've got a 20 mil particle board and I'm just going to draw this in with a fill. So I'm going to hit this 10%, that's fine, I'll try that. And click OK, just make sure the layer, I'm going to put it into documentation sections to make sure it appears. Click OK and up at the top I'm going to just choose, I choose this um, one at the angle because it means I can just click here. I'm going to go right away to the very very end and zoom in and click again. Gesture down and then just type 20. Go enter. And I get something that will represent my um, particle board flooring. Now what I want to do now is put in my joists. So we haven't designed the mid floor joists so you can assume that what's left after you put in this particle board flooring is the depth of the joist. So let's measure that. Go up here or type M and just click here. 240. That's what I'll use. Back to detail element. This time I'm going to go to core elements. Go here. Make sure the element is in the right orientation. And let's check the size. So 45. You'll have worked out this out from 3604 perhaps. We know this is now 240. And uh, I'm just going to decide where to put it in. I'm going to go from the, yeah, the top's fine, but I'll go from the outside and click here. Because there's two of them, an external wall, I'll put in two, maybe just blocking, but now I want to put it the whole way across uh, this floor. So I'm going to go in and select one of these, edit, move, multiply, or control U. Go to spread and get a spacing from 3604 450. All we do then is just click here, zoom out and hold the shift button down and go over to the end of our floor and we've got a whole lot of mid-floor joists. This one you might have to drag a copy um, to get it over to the edge of this wall. Okay, now You've got to be very careful in putting in the ceiling buttons because don't forget they span at right angles to these. So what I may do here is just go to the fill tool again, make it a clear fill this time and just do what I did previously. Click here and go right away just across to the edge of the room. Click here and go down 35. Enter. And that represents my buttons spanning across the underside of the um, mid-floor joists. You can put in the uh, wall framing and the uh, strapping plates here. And really, all you've got to do underneath that is put in something to represent the ceiling. So I'll just go, OK, give me a fill again. And I will just zoom right in. Click here. 
and go right away to the very end, click again and go down, say 20 millimeters. And you've got a line of battens, you've got the ceiling gypsum plasterboard fixed to it, there's the void for the joists. Now what I'll do over here is uh, I'm going to just do a series of battens which are spanning in a different direction. So at this point I'm going to assume the joists are spanning this way and if my battens are spanning at right angles I would see them coming out of the drawing. So let's go up to detail element, go to ceiling, uh, battens, click here. Just be careful, for some reason uh, in my application it seems to open up upside down so I'm just going to turn this around and don't worry about the, the length because we can stretch it again as before. Check the depth, 35, usually as per 3604 and then just go in and uh, we will try and put it in in the right position. So go here and you can see that I've got insulation but my battens are in the right place relative to the joists. Unfortunately it's a little bit too big so I'm just going to stretch that back as before, remove the node, bring it back to line up here and uh, there probably will be insulation across here by the way but again it's something to talk about in class. And you can see that we've got some good detail in here. If there wasn't any insulation just select the detail element and under this you can go insulation no. Uh, in my case I'm going to keep it there um, just to demonstrate but that is how you can change that setting. Okay perhaps there's a bathroom up above. Uh, I think the only thing to watch out for is when you're doing rafters you can use the same method we used for the uh, mid-floor joists but because they're cut at an angle just measure this beforehand so just go measure hold the shift button and get whatever depth that is and make a note of it. Um, I'm going to stop now because the video might be getting a little long but hopefully that will help you make a start and understand how we're going to make our sections start to look kind of professional and like a construction section should. Thank you and good luck.